Good morning, girls. Back to the lectures on history of Malayalam cinema. So, in the last class, I gave you a very, a very, very short introduction to the initial cinematic output from Kerala. So, we talked about the visual literacy we had even before the coming of cinema. We talked about our traditional art forms. puppet dance kut kudiyattam and kadagali which made us acquainted with the visual medium and then we talked about the first two films one is vigada kumaran made by jc daniel and second one martanda varma made by pv rao and i narrated the tragic story behind these two films behind making of these two films and exhibition of these two films but we should understand that these are the two films which paved the strong foundation for the most flourishing film industry in kerala now we move on so they now we see the era of madras studios making malayalam cinema and for the studio barons in madras kerala was actually a market for them just waiting to be conquered and controlled and what they they did was like they began to finance malayalam films with local actors so it is like this technicians from the studios in madras were dispatched to kerala to assist with their making and the films were then brought back to their studios in madras for processing so we had the first malayalam talkie balan which was directed by s notani and produced by t r sundaram of modern theaters in salem and it was actually a melodrama with more tamil influence than malayalam and talking about this film balan it is actually based on a short story vidhyam mrs nayar fate and mrs nayar which was written by a sundaram and it actually explored the strained relationship between two motherless children balan and sarasa and their cruel stepmother meenakshi and i have discussed this point earlier too like unlike hindi and tamil movies which actually dwelled on mythological themes malayalam film industry was centered around social issues the abuse and exploitation that the children face at the hands of their stepmother the death of their father govind nair it actually escalates the drama and makes the audience go through a labyrinth of emotions so these two children balan and sarasa go through a grueling time after their father's death and the harsh treatment from their stepmother heightens as the days pass and this is the nutshell of the story and the screenplay and the dialogue of the movie was written by mudugulam രാഘവൻ പിള്ള സോ ഹി ഈസ് നോൺ ആസ് മലയാള സിനിമയുടെ അക്ഷര ഗുരു എന്നറിയപ്പെടുന്ന മുതുകുളം രാഘവൻ പിള്ള ആൻഡ് ക്യാമറ വാസ് ഹാൻഡിൽഡ് ബൈ എ ജേർമൻ സിനിമാറ്റോഗ്രാഫർ ബാഡോ ബുഷ്വാക്ക് ബി എ ഡി ഒ ജി യു എസ് എച്ച് ഡബ്ല്യു എ എൽ കെ ഇ ആർ ബാഡോ ബുഷ്വാക്ക് ആൻഡ് ദ മൂവി ഹാഡ് വർഗീസ് ആസ് ഇറ്റ്സ് എഡിറ്റർ and it was produced as i said earlier it was produced by tr sundaram and the film had around 23 songs so this was our first talkie which came out in the year 1938 and after that we have nanambiga which came out in the year 1940 which was also directed by notani and was made at new tone studios in madras and then came the next one prakladan 
It was directed by K. Subramanyam and was shot at Gemini Studios. So, Prakladan had actually had a story from Hindu epic, whereas both Balan and Nyanambika were concerned with social issues. And then came a Kerala based productions. It was in 1949 that P.J. Cherian was the first native from Kerala to embark on film production with Nirmala, which was the first film to explore the possibility of music and songs in cinema. So the lyrics were spent by legendary Malayalam poet G. Shangara Kurupa. It became so popular that song dance sequence became essential ingredients of Malayalam cinema. From then on, we have we started adding music and songs to our cinema. So there is this famous film archivist P. K. Nair. He maintains that this is the first film made and completed in Kerala, but the award goes to Velli Nakshatram, which came out in 1949, which was made at the new Udaya Studios, which was set up, as you know, it is owned by Kunjako family, which was set up in 1947 by distributor K.V. Koshi and Kunjako. And... It is said that Udaya Studios soon made its mark with a string of box office success and became a household name. And then came a group of films which were super hits. It happened in 1950s. So in 1950s, we know that the state of Kerala was created and Malayalam cinema acquired a momentum and started getting an identity of its soul. So, 10 films were made in 1940s and it was only in 1950s that Malayalam cinema got an identity of its own. So, Malayalam cinema took a new path during the mid-1950s towards more down to earth social realities rather than all those cosmetic social dramas. We have, as I said earlier, we have two well established studios. One is Udaya Studio and the other one is Maryland Studio. Udaya Studio, as I said earlier, is the oldest film production studio in Malayalam film industry. As I said earlier, it was, it was Established in 1947, it is as a native of Alapi, you will be familiar with where this studio is, uh, is located. It is in Padrapalli. And this studio actually influenced the gradual shift of Malayalam film industry from its original base of Madras. So when we discussed the initial part, we talked about the era of Madras studios. From now on, we see the shift to all those, uh, or shift of all these movies to these two studios. And it is considered as a milestone in the history of Malayalam film industry. So the first film of the studio, as I said earlier, it is Vidli Nakshatram, which came out in 1949. And film pro, uh, the films produced at the studio were produced under the banner of K and K Combines and later under Excel Productions. And Udaya Studios' professional rivalry with Maryland Studio was quite famous. So we have the second one, Maryland Studio. Maryland Studio... Maryland Studio is the second film studio in Kerala and it was established in 1951. 
by P. Subramanian in Trivandrum. It was in Nema. And the studio produced around 69 films. And their home productions were produced under the company Neela Productions. So that's about Udaya Studio. And then we have the first mega hit movie that is Jeevida Nauga, which came out in the year 1951. So it was actually a turning point in the history of Malayalam cinema. So we have the first mega hit and the first superstar. So the first superstar in Malayalam film, it is not, as you think, it is not Mamuti, Mohanlal or even Jain. The first superstar in Malayalam films, Malayalam cinema, it was Tikkurushi Sugumaran Nair. So there is this picture of Tikkurushi there and he plays later he played the roles of the father figure in all those Malayalam films. If you remember, he is the father of Mohanlal's character in Vidunam. So that is Tikkurishi Sugumaran Nair. So he was actually the first superstar. And this is this movie was highly dramatic musical film which narrated the story of ego clashes in a joint family and it was mainly directed directed towards women audience. Tikurshi Sugumaranayan was actually an actor from the stage and he became the first superstar. But you should understand that the success of this movie had also an adverse a negative impact on Malayalam cinema. What was that? It is said that the films that were produced after Jeevita Nauga were made according to this success formula and nothing creative was seen for a long time. So we see that trend even now that if we see if there is a movie which becomes a super hit and then there is a long list of movies which take the same pattern from the super hit film. So, we see that in here too. So, from here on we see that superstars took over the driver's seat and directors were forced to the background. So this is the story of Jeevita Nauga and it was after the success of this particular movie, Neela Queen, that of, uh, we see a group of films with authentic Malayalam stories started coming in with the success of Neela Queen. So we see all those authentic Malayalam stories set in the backdrops of Kerala villages started arriving. We have this film Minna Minang directed by Ramu Karyat and Rarichan and the Pauran by P. Baskaran which came out during this period and the film based on Thagari's story Tandi Dangari is also seen the silver screen and we should discuss these two movies one is Neela Quill and the other one is Newspaper Boy so these are the two notable films which is considered as a watershed moment in the history of Malayalam cinema these two films redirected the trajectory of Malayalam cinema, I should say. So the first one is Neela Quill, which was directed by P. Baskaran and Ramu Karyat. So I think you will be familiar with the songs from the movie. One is Ellarin Cholana, Kallana Ninjilana, and the other one is Kaila Rigatha. Hope you have heard 
one of these songs so talking about veela kuyu it is actually a realistic melodrama and it is the first film which brought national award president's silver medal to malayalam cinema we have the gold medal with chemi so this is the first film which got silver medal from president and it is based on the story of the same title written by urup pc kutikrishnan and it is set in a small village and the film narrates the story of the love affair between a lower caste girl neeli and an educated higher class higher caste school teacher sridharan nayar so if you remember we had this first film bigada kumaran which had uh, this issue with caste but 1954 we see this malayalam cinema taking a courageous move with a controversial theme so it was miss kumari who gave life to the character neeli while satyan portrayed the role of sridharan nayar so if you get a chance please go through uh, this movie it is available in youtube so if you want to have a look please go to youtube and the story is like this neeli and sridharan nayar fall in love and neeli becomes pregnant and sridharan nayar refuses to marry neeli as he fears what this society will talk about them so he couldn't face this conservative society and neeli becomes an outcast neeli becomes an outcast and she dies during childbirth this is the story and the village postman changran nair who is enacted uh, uh, the role was enacted by p baskaran adopts the boy child ignoring the protest of the society and sridhar nair marries a girl so sridharan nair so uh, girls sorry for the background noises so the story continues sridharan nair marries a girl nalini and the film ends with sridharan nair and nalini accepting the boy as their own child because they uh, don't have children so they adopts this boy so the story ends there and the pastel slang used by the characters gives the film a realistic touch the film successfully portrayed the prevailing social evils such as untouchability feudalism and injustice towards women the lyrics was done by p baskaran and there is a sensitive folk music by k raghavan and there were around nine songs in the film as i said earlier the film was also a musical hit and remains the the career's best of playback singers like kori kod abdul khader shanda pinay and we have these songs as i said earlier ellarin chollana and kaayil arigathu vaale irinirpo these songs remain evergreen hits so this is the story of nutshell this is the story of neelakuil in a nutshell and now we have the next movie the one of the important movies in the history of malayalam cinema it is newspaper boy which came out in the year 1955 so this is you should remember these two movies 
அண்ட் நீல கோயில் நைன்டீன் ஃபிஃப்டி ஃபோர் அண்ட் பாய் நைன்டீன் ஸோ இட் இஸ் கன்சிடர்ட் டு பி த ஃபர்ஸ்ட் நியோ ரியலிஸ்ட் சினிமா இன் மலையாளம் இட் ஆக்சுவலி நரேட்ஸ் த லைஃப் ஆஃப் த காமன் மேன் ஆன் த ஸ்ட்ரீட் அண்ட் வாட் மேக்ஸ் திஸ் ஃபிலிம் நாட் வர்த்தி இஸ் தேட் it was made by a batch of amateur film students headed by p ramdas and the entire production program from script writing to direction was controlled and executed by these group of students so these students were actually from the school adarsh kala mandir and the screen play was based on the short story written by p ramdam p ramdas himself and this film was made on a shoe string budget of around 175000 and also featured mostly amateur actors and was as i said earlier was made by an inexperienced crew but this film was was critically acclaimed it was actually influenced by italian neo realism so we'll discuss this moment later italian neo realism and this movie is also remembered for being the world's first commercial film made by students so as i said earlier it is focus on the life of this character appu he is the young protagonist and uh, story revolves around the members of his family a poor family and as i said earlier it opened to good reviews from various critics and uh, all of them appreciated ramdas for taking up such a risky and experimental film so you should understand this is the starting point of malayalam cinema and to take uh, something like a, a risky project it took great courage from the part of the director and these group of students so it was well appreciated by film critics and even now it becomes a great part of malayalam cinema so these are the two films now we come to the cinema in 1960s so most of the films of the 60s were animated by the nationalist and socialist projects and were centered on issues relating to caste and class expo- exploitation and talked about the degeneration of the feudal class and the break up of the joint family system and we have these movies one is bhargavi nilayam so hope you have seen this film it is based on the short story written by bashir it is actually a horror movie and it was directed by uh, a vincent and we have chemi we will discuss the film later chemi we have film analysis by ramu karyat and we have a set of movies coming out from mt vasudevan our story we have movies like these were the super hit movies we have murappenna irittinte aatmavu olam theeru tulabaram etc which were directed by p baskar and it actually gave a new face to malayalam cinema it is actually the superstar prem nasir who in all these films gave a new face until then he was only seen in all those romantic heroes role so 1960s i said earlier it marked the beginning of the star the rise of star we see the rise of star actor prem nasir who it is said that he acted in over 600 films in a career which spanned around 
30 years and that too most of the films with the with his pair Sheila and these were the important directors P. Baskaran, Damu Karyat, A. Vincent, these were the important directors during this period. So, girls, we finished till 1970s and now we come to the commercial cinema in the 70s. So, we have all these working class themed films in 1970s. If you remember the famous dialogue from by this uh, Jain in Angadi that we are not coolies, we are not beggars. So this is a group of films based on working class themes. So the emergence of a new genre of pure action themed films in a movement led by action star Jain, who is usually considered the first genuine commercial superstar of Malayalam cinema. So we see 1970s, it was a decade of exponential growth of Malayalam cinema. It is said that IV Shashi alone made 10 to 15 films in a year. Per year, he made 15 films. So that was the exponential increase. Because one of the reasons of this exponential increase may be it was during this time we had the influx of Gulf money. All those paychecks sent home by millions of people from Kerala who emigrated to work in the Gulf states. So most of this money are invested in real estate, industry, fisheries, and some made its way to film industry. So, as I said earlier, Ivy Shashi, he, he was making, he was the most prolific director during this time. We have a series of political melodramas on the scandals in Kerala politics in the 1980s. We have these movies which, is, which were specialized in vigilante films with the actor Mammuti in stellar roles. So there is this hero fighting and overcoming an oppressive system by resorting to extra legal means. So we have these films Avanari, Inspector Balram, Vartha, The City. And these films include fast moving action, plenty of violence and a complicated plot that moves at a dizzying space, dizzying pace. And the other successful partnership in Malayalam popular cinema during that time, it is the combination of, as you know, it is a combination of Mohanlal with the director Priya Darshan, who range included comedies, lavish musicals, and psychological and tragic melodramas. We have his super hit films, Thalavattam, which came out in 1986, Chitram, 1988, and Kilikam. So, we see the emergence, along with that, we see the emergence of another stream, which appeared during 1970s, it was a synthesis of highly commercial popular cinema and parallel cinema from which parallel cinema is a group of film from which all these common people always stayed away. So we had the combination, a rare combination of commercial cinema and parallel cinema and it was known as middle stream cinema, Madhyavarti cinema. These films mainly came from directors like K.G. George, Patmarajan and Bharadan and had meaningful themes but had popular forms of presentations and had influenced a generation of film viewers. So in the next class we will deal with 
this middle cinema as well as we will go to parallel cinema and then later we come to the contemporary cinema so hope you have understood the lecture so i think most of the films you will be familiar if you want to see it again please google it most of the films are available online so thank you girls have a nice day